Hey everybody, it's Tara here from Road to Nowhere. Um, I know I don't normally do film reviews, but I just got back from watching Scream twice, back to back, and thought I'd just share my thoughts. So, you know, just as a Scream fan, as a Wes Craven fan, as a horror movie fan, I'm, I was just sitting there and I'm, I was just like, huh. <laughs> so, I did enjoy it. Um, but I did leave with thoughts or things I wish had happened or um, just trying to piece things together. So I just thought I'd just share my thoughts on that. So, so yeah, spoilers. Spoilers, honey. Spoilers, okay? Um, Scream. Right? The first one. You have Billy Loomis and Stumacher, right? So Billy's motive was that his girlfriend, Sydney, her mom slept with his dad, causing his mom to leave. Therefore, he kills Sydney's mom, gets too involved because peer pressure, and then we kick off the whole franchise, right? Okay. So then Scream 2. So you got, you got one as the, the backbone, right? Clearly. So in the Scream 2, Sydney and Randy. Are they the only two? Yeah, they're the only ones left from the first one, Sydney and Randy. Then obviously Gail Weathers and Deputy Dewey. Okay. So Sydney and Randy are at college. And then killing start. Two killers again this time. You have Billy Loomis's mom, who um, portrayed a news anchor to kind of be a part of the action, get in on the scoop, who knows what, all that good kind of stuff. You know how serial killers like to. Be high, you know, watch behind the police tapes and watch the, you know, accidents and everything. Yeah. And then you had Mickey, who was a film student and loved the stab movies and was just all, you know, so Billy, Billy's mom found Mickey, who wanted fame in this whole horror stab franchise. You know, life imitating art, imitating life. And the movies made me do it. The music made me do it. All that kind of so there we go. So then we leave Scream 2 with Sydney, Gale, and Dewey. Okay. Um, then Scream 3, which I feel Scream 3 left a really bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, which I get. Um, I don't think I'm as critical as some people. I mean, I do enjoy it. It's not my favorite, but I enjoy it. And again, there's a story to it. It makes sense if you let it. So the killer, there's only one killer in Scream 3, though, which kind of breaks the rules a bit. Um, and that was uh, Roman, who turns out to be Sydney's illegitimate brother. His mom, or their mom, um, before she got murdered, obviously. Their mom was in Hollywood, slept around, got pregnant with him, um, gave him up for adoption or whatever have you. And then when he finds her and Sydney in this nice little home life in Woodsboro, he turns up and she's like, nope, that was then, this is now, you're not a part of this life, off with you. So bitter resentment towards Sydney, etc. So obviously he gets in Sydney. He orchestrates this whole, you know, getting in on making the new Stab movie, which brings Sydney along, which brings Gail along, which brings Dewey along. Um, and they're the only three that survive. Clearly, because they're, the, they're the legacy killer characters. They have to survive, right? Okay, which takes us into Scream 4, which, again, a lot of people felt like this one was just like, they're just milking the franchise now. They just want another movie, right? But again, it made sense in a way. The lead character, Jill, and her friend Charlie, um, Jill is Sydney's cousin. Her mom was Sydney's mom's sister, right? So she's all, all my life, it's Sydney this and Sydney that. And what about me? What about me? You know, one of them, right? So she wants to get in on the franchise, make her own little movie, filming the killings between that her and Charlie do, and then get famous as the new hero, try to kill Sydney and everybody. Doesn't work. Again, Sydney, Gail, and Stewie all survive, right? Okay. So now, 2022. Is it Scream 5 or is it Scream 2022? I'm not sure yet. Um, and as they referenced in the movie, it's not a sequel, it's a requel. Because it's not a reboot, but it's not a sequel. It's a requel, which I, I kind of I like that. Um, I also like the fact that in the movie, 
one of the characters, I'm going to rerun and tell you about the characters. One of the characters says how a requel, it's like a reboot and a sequel in the same place. where Because it, it's a sequel from like the original, but it's a reboot because it has new cast, new characters. But those cast and characters reflect legacy characters or somehow tied to them. And so she says, you can't do a straight out reboot from the original because fans won't like it. She mentions Child's Play. Yes, I hated the Child's Play reboot. I love the original Child's Play films, um, and the reboot, I just, I think I enjoyed it, but I'm not a fan. I'm not here for that. Um, the whole, you know, uh, twisted AI angle, um, and then the doll, the doll was hideous, right? Um, I mean, I know Chucky isn't supposed to be lovable looking, but this doll, it just, he, he looked fake. Whereas the real Chucky, it looked like a possessed doll. You could see it is a doll. And, it, yeah. Um, but then she referenced where, like, um, these other reboots where the new cast uh, characters have a tie to or related to the original characters. And she, uh, the legacy characters. And men she mentions a few movies here and there. And she goes, Ghostbusters. And I'm like, yes, exactly. You've got these new characters. But they're, you know, at least the main characters, Phoebe and the kid from Stranger Things and all that, they're Egon's family. So it ties them directly to Egon and the original guys, right? Yeah. So, so with this, it's similar. And I know they said in like the, uh, trailers and such that you know each character each victim or whatever has a tie to the originals okay so one of my things leading up to this and I'm, I'm trying to work out okay who's related to who and i'm thinking timeline it's been 25 years these high school students even if they're 18 wouldn't have even been alive then so i'm like how in the hell does someone equate them to what happened sort of like it's they weren't even around then so how were the hell is it how is it their fault right um so in this one here comes the spoilers the killers are nobodies they're fans that just want to make a a new movie a new stab movie because they weren't happy with the sequels um i know several fandoms primarily Ghostbuster one, <laughs> where the fans do get quite um, heated with, it, with their likes and dislikes and how this should be and how that should be and true fans don't like this and true fans do this and, and it's, fandoms can get crazy. Um, and that's who they are. They are just like these mega fans of Stab and they just want to create their own Stab movie. They want to make their own fame. They want to, you know, make their, their own movie based on real events. So, so they're nobodies, which is, I found a bit disappointing. I was a bit like, you've got to tie the, it's not just the characters that I wanted tied into. I wanted the, the killers to be somehow tied to the past. Um, character was, or, or victim. Well, yeah, let's, let's just go straight out characters. Characters you've got, again, you've got, I'm looking at my notes. You've got Sydney, Dewey, and Gail, given, right? Okay, so from there you have the main character, Sam, Samantha, who, big spoiler, turns out to be Billy Loomis's illegitimate child. Her, her mom, and Billy got together, um, but her mom was dating this other guy and said, oh, of course it's yours. And so they got married, and then here comes Sam. And then a few years later, they have their own child, who's Sam's stepsister, Tara, who you see predominantly in the trailer and as a big Wes Craven Nightmare on Elm Street fan I think it's awesome that I've got a character in a Wes Craven film not named after me but my name my name is Tara Sue so it's like ah, ee, it's exciting because it's not a name you come across often in films except for like Gone the Wind um okay so then the next tie-in Chad and Mindy the twins they are Randy's niece and nephew so if you remember in see Scream three on the set very briefly you see randy's sister come along and she has a videotape from randy and so, you know if you guys are seeing this that means i i'm dead and beware the trilogy rolls right and you see her for a brief second in part five as well so chad and mindy randy's niece and nephew straight tie 
Then there's Deputy Judy Hicks, who's now a sheriff. So you've got Judy Hicks from Scream 3 and her son Wes, named after Wes Craven, obviously. Um, and also Sam's last name is Carpenter, so I kept thinking a little nod to what to you know uh, John Carpenter. So we got Judy and Wes. And then the last tie-in. This is one that ir irritates me. Um, so there's this character, Vince, who has like maybe five lines. It's, it's, <sighs> to me, it's a wasted character. It's a wasted character. It's a wasted kill. Okay. You see him briefly. He apparently had hooked up with one of the characters, Liv, who does not have a direct tie into the original film. So she's just there. Then you see Vince outside, gracefully pissing a, a, um, up a wall. And then his car turns on. Have a bit, bit of a Christine moment there, which I appreciated that. Bit of a Christine moment. Anyway, get him. He gets, he's done. Very quick kill. Very, you're like, that's it. That was literally Ghostface comes up behind him and just stabs him like right in the juggler. And he just bleeds out. And that's it. Just one stab. Done. In and out. Uh, turns out Vince is the son of Stu's sister. I think they said her name was Lindsay. Didn't even know Stu had a sister. This is where things kind of get... Okay. We knew Randy had a sister. We met her in part three. Didn't know Stu had a sister. Um, but again, he was... He was... In the one scene for a few seconds outside the school. Oh no, there he is. Nah, nah, nah. And then in the bar where they have a bit of a few words. Then he goes outside and then one and done. Okay. It felt like it felt like coming up with a character just to have a, a tie to Stu. So you've got Sam, who's Billy's daughter, and you've got this Vince cat, who's Stu's nephew that he probably never knew. Um, he did look a bit older than the other kids, so maybe he knew him as a baby. Maybe, yeah. So that just. It, that just felt pointless to me, that one. So I didn't like that. I didn't like that because it was just pointless. Like me rambling like this about him. So, the ending for this one. The ending to me was very much like the ending in part four. It was very much, we're staging this so we can get the fame, so we can have a stab movie based on our events that we've planned and all these things that we've done felt a bit rehashed that instead there's no you know Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers to keep coming back again and again but the Billy's daughter who you know he wasn't around for several reasons Sydney kills her dad then she finds out he's her dad when she's like 13 and then you know resentment no oh, what was me what was me comes back and kills Sydney right <clears throat> and of course it doesn't go to plan the good guys when um and they kill, they kill Richie and Amber, who's this other girl, who again, they're nobodies. They apparently, they met on like Reddit, some sort of scream, stab, um, fan chat room thing, Amber's parents buys, um, Stu Mocker's family house, and she gets obsessed, because, I mean, yeah, that'd be kind of cool, right? Um... And they come up with this big plan. Oh, well, I'm actually friends with this girl, you know, and her sister is Billy Loomis's d daughter. And let's get her back to town and let's get Sydney back to town and let's make her own scrab requel. <clears throat> so, I didn't, I, uh, I didn't like that. I just, <clears throat> I like how they tied characters back to the original. But I just wish the killers were somebody. But then again, because at the very end, you know, they're talking to Gail. And it's like, oh, you know, what are you going to write about this time? And she's like, well, not this. Let them just die in anonymity. Anonymity? That's one of those words. Anyway, anonymously. Um... So I guess in a way that makes sense that they were nobodies because who's going to remember them, right? 
the other thing I was hoping for, and literally during the last, like the, the finale scenes, the fight scenes, I'm here going, come on, come on, come on. I come across this image. I'm going to try to put it up here with my very bad editing skills. Um, don't remember where it was from. This is not the original one I saw. This is one I've just managed to refund to show you. And I'm thinking, okay, that could be Stu. His face is all scarred up. You know, the television falling on him. So he could have lived that. Could he? Maybe. It's Hollywood. Why not? Um, face is all scarred up from the TV falling on him. And I'm thinking, but what if that's like a very good Photoshop image from him being arrested in Bad Girls? Okay. But then looking at it, you know, I'm like, but his hair wasn't that short in Bad Girls. So, somehow someone's done this very good Photoshop image. Um, if it's not, let me know where it's from because I don't know where it's from. Um, and I'm like, oh, great. My, Stu comes back. Perfect. He's, you know, been in jail. He's been in a sane asylum, whatever. And for whatever reason, he comes back right at the television, everything. And he's a good guy, right? And he helps them. Because he's like, oh, no, it's, you know, it's my best friend's daughter and she can't die in Sydney. I'm so sorry. Peer pressure. And, you know, and I was really waiting for that, for some, somehow for Sue to just turn up and just be her and just help them. And that didn't happen. So, yeah. I've always thought this about the Scream movies. And it's one of those, I don't know if it's a, I don't know, but. No matter who is Ghostface, right? He's always tall. <laughs> he's always tall and very strong. So even like in Scream 5, where, okay, one of them is a tall guy. And the other one's Amber, who's, you know, what, five, three-ish or something, about my height or so. Short, short girl. Um, scream, uh, scream face, Ghostface is always tall, right? And it's just like... That's just always been one of those things, you know, in four, um, when it was Charlie and Jill, okay, neither of them were tall, but Ghostface always did seem as tall as uh, the main characters, or like, you know, um, Sydney and Gail and Dewey, if not just a pinch taller, and it's, it's mostly these last two, where the Ghostface himself in the whole gear is, you know, at least shoulder to shoulder, or just a pinch above most of the characters, but when they, when they're demasked, it's this little bitty girl, you know, or it's this short guy, or it's, you know, my cat's gonna jump up. You coming? Come here. Do you wanna be famous on YouTube? This is Ozzy. Say hello. This is my old man. He's my old man, ain't you? Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, he sleeps in the bed with me. He's my baby, but you claw on me. Can I put you down? Cause you're, you're clinging like I'm gonna drop you or something. Over there. Ugh, goodness. Also, uh, I love the whole 4DX thing, whether it's 4D, 4DX, or 2D, 4DX. Awesome. Ghostbusters was awesome with this, especially when he's driving the Ecto around in the field. You felt like you were in the car, and it was so cool. And Free Guy was really cool in the 4DX. This, though, it was violent. I mean, I'm, I'm, I love the immersiveness of it, getting moved around in the air and things poking you in the back and all this kind of stuff. Oh my God, I, I was like whiplash. I was getting jolted around on all this stuff. I'm, like, I'm glad I didn't buy popcorn because it would have been everywhere, right? So don't don't see this one in 4DX. Uh, it just, it didn't ruin it, but oh my, what, whoa, ah, mm. it was, um, it was just violent. So, I saw it 2DX, or 2D, right after, and was able to just digest it a bit more without getting thrown about. And, um, yeah, I'm, so I enjoyed it. You know, I'm, I'm a Wes fan, I'm a Scream fan, but this one, it just, it just does little bitty nitpicks. Like the Vince character, Stu's nephew, pointless. Um, and, yeah. Anyway, this is a very long review. I'm sorry. I do ramble. I will try to edit this down some. 
But uh, if you've seen Scream, let me know down below what you think about it. What did you think of Vince? Was it a pointless character? Um, were you expecting to see Stu? Would you have liked to have seen Stu come back? And whatever, whether a good guy or a bad guy. And um, yeah, let me know. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.